Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Episode 9 Rise of Skywalker spoiler cast. This is Sarah on Sermon and as I am the editor for TV and film at theouterhaven.net and with me I've got three fantastic guests who are going to introduce themselves right now. Hi, I'm Keith Mitchell. I'm the resident uh, Star Wars I like but I'm not super happy about the series so hi, how you doing? I am Todd Black, your resident Jedi Master. And I need to remind you that if you only think that a Star Wars movie is good or bad, only a Sith deals in absolutes. You're welcome. Oh, okay. and, and I and I am Carl Smart. I am the guy who reviewed Rise of Skywalker on the Uh Yeah, I'm probably going to be the guy who's going to be most controversial here because yeah, I've been <laughs> reviewing these things for a while, so I got a bit jaded over time. Plus, he's Australian. Clearly. He likes he likes to cause conflicts. He likes that. It's okay. We still love you, Carl. It's fine. We do. No Alrighty, so we are here to talk about Rise of Skywalker, and that means, guys, as per the title, this is spoiler heavy. So if you haven't seen it, first of all, what a lovely rock you must live under. It must be nice. Uh, but we will be talking about plot elements, uh, surprises, character development. So if you are not caught up with the movie, <coughs> come back later. You know, just go, go, go watch it for like whatever fifteen, twenty dollars is what a ticket costs today. Uh, but for those of you who have seen the movie and who have thoughts and feelings and lots of anger in your heart, why don't we get started going around? We will start with Keith. Oh, uh, boy. Keith, why don't you start us off talking about what your overall impressions of the movie were? All right. So I had resisted listening to the people talking about the movie before it came out. I resisted reviews, which is kind of hard to also go over Carl's review and fix some of the things and go, I can't read this review because I... I have to see it for myself. But actually going to it, actually seeing the movie, um, I enjoyed it. How about that? I had a lot of issues with it. There are a lot of plot mechanics I did not agree with. There are a lot of... Um, that's pushed it forward, and that's retconned a lot of stuff from the other movies. So um, it's a nice movie to go watch, but if you're a big Star Wars fan, it's not going to be your cup of tea. You're not going to be happy with this. I was okay. not happy with it. Pretty lukewarm, right, Todd? I was in the definitive. I liked it, didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. There, there, and which is which is a viable category. Um, I thought it was an enjoyable movie. I, I think the opening sequence, especially with Kylo meeting the Emperor, and then the uh, scene with Poe and Finn escaping the um, the First Order, sorry, uh, was one of the best opening scenes in the history of Star Wars, and I will hold on to that. But as the movie went on, there were questionable scenes questionable plot points a lot of leaps in logic and like keith mentioned a lot of retcons especially of last jedi um and then the ending was a nice way to tie it all off but there was no way this movie was ever going to satisfy everyone and you kind of felt that at points jj just didn't try he was just trying to wrap up everything so it was a good movie not a great movie and i'm okay with that all right, Carl, I know that you've written the review, as you said, for the OuterHaven.net, and everybody should go read it, OuterHaven.net, guys. Uh, but why don't you give us your impressions? My impressions, at least walking out of it, was that they tried to satisfy both camps, both those that li liked The Last Jedi and those that didn't like it. And all they proved was they had no real idea of what they were doing with this trilogy. Like, the multiple directors and writers they brought on for this, Kathleen Kennedy deciding, hey, let's burn everything to the ground, all that type of politicking that was going on behind the scenes that ended up sort of really screwing up, which, which could have been a really good movie. And just like Todd said, you know, I, I enjoyed the movie for what it was. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. It was just a movie. They tried to wrap up what they could with what they had available, but unfortunately just didn't didn't seem to have that satisfying ending sort of like you've had in previous trilogies. Alright, well I have to agree with you guys. I definitely think that this movie was a lot of pedal to the metal and there just wasn't really time for that sort of emotional resonance that you kind of hope for ending this massive nine-part saga. Um... So I just, I, I really enjoyed it in the sense that I thought it was a really fun movie. I thought a lot of the writing in terms of dialogue was really great, but there was a lot of hopping around. It just felt like nothing, like they were like a gymnast jumping from corner to corner, but they never stuck any of the landings. It just didn't 
didn't give you that feeling that I think a lot of people who love Star Wars and who really love movies in general want, which is that satisfaction of having felt like you got something emotionally or or mentally from this movie. Uh, it just it felt a little soulless, which kind of sucks. But you know what can you do? So now that we are agreed generally, I'd like to dig into some of the details. So maybe why don't we hit up what we found most surprising about the the sort of the ending of the Skywalker I think it's a nanology when it's nine of them uh why don't we start with Carl so okay so we're going straight straight to the ending which to me is like that last probably about five minutes of the movie where uh Ray ends up on Tatooine and she gets asked for the 800th time in this trilogy what's your name and she, she decides to be a Skywalker I thought that that was just I don't know some of the most horrible writing I've seen in this this particular trilogy if not all of Star Wars and I'll include the the uh, holiday special in that batch <laughs> um like for for me it was just one of those things of like oh I'm choosing to be a Skywalker it's like well technically you didn't really besides like the time that you spent with Leia in between movies that we're supposed to believe was like a couple of months or something, you really didn't have anything to sort of say, hey, I'm a Skywalker. If anybody had that connection, it was Ben. You know, because at least then you've got, you know, Mother was Leia, who was technically a Skywalker. And I just sort of thought, okay, you could have still called yourself Ray Palpatine and try and revive that name as something as like a redemption arc or something. It would have left us something to work with in following like TV shows or whatever they want to do with the series. But to turn around and go, I'm Ray Skywalker, and they just sort of stand in with the two sons dropping down. I'm like, yeah, that's a cop out. Sorry, that just wrong. Didn't didn't enjoy it at all. It was just plus there's like big plot hole before that that we'll we'll get into at a later point involving like you know what was said by Palpatine before the big battle. But yeah. That that ending just no. I'm sorry. I, I I couldn't. I can't find it anywhere believable. I find it. I I literally flipped off the screen as I watched it happen. I've seen uh, other videos of entire cinemas booing that ending. Wait, really? And that was yeah. There's wow, this clips out there videos. of that. I'll um I'll have to send them along to you. But, yeah, into entire entire cinemas booing that ending. That, that's just how that just shows you how like convoluted that was well damn all right uh Don? um I, I, I this is gonna this is gonna anger mace um i didn't mind that ending i, di- I didn't mind it because i think at, at its heart it was about and this is kind of um this kind of tied into kylo too that just because you have a name doesn't mean that it defines you this was always this was honestly part of ray's journey throughout this trilogy was does your name define you you know she was no one at first she was just ray and now she finds out she's ray palpatine the descendant of one of the most evil men in the history of the galaxy and even though i agree that um with mesa he or carl that he could have um or she could have taken the name and tried to just make it better i, I mean that wasn't that would have been a really weird way of going about it, especially for kind of like an ending whereas she knows that the skywalker line even with Anakin, it was in his darkest days. You know, it, it was meant to be a beacon of light. That you know, he was Anakin was a hero during the Clone Wars up until his transformation. Luke was a hero in the Rebellion, and Leia was the key in the Resistance. And so, took that name to kind of be the light in the next generation of Jedi, whoever they may be, that they could say, "Hey, there is a, still a Skywalker around," especially since Ben is dead. And so I, I was okay with that. My biggest problem with the ending in general was that the final boss was Palpatine. I mean, yes, he's been this overarching figure. And I actually, I've actually in the camp of, you know, liking the prequels. Oh my gosh. It's so, ra- it's so radical liking the prequels anyway, but I liked seeing the rise of Palpatine from, you know, the small center to the chancellor, to the, to the emperor. And then when he died and returned the Jedi, that was a fitting end for him. He was betrayed by Vader, and, you know, the Rebellion won, and all was good. And then all of a sudden, hey, he's alive! Oh, by the way, he also was on this new planet of the Sith, 
Poli has an epic fleet just waiting for Kylo to take it. And, you know, what could possibly stop him this time? Oh, it's his granddaughter. Oh, okay, yeah, whatever. But I just I didn't like that Palpatine was the final boss. I mean, yes, it would have kind of sort of soiled Kylo's uh, redemption story, which I do think was handled well enough uh, if he was the final boss. But they really set up Kylo as the final boss. He was the supreme leader. And it's like, oh, no, oh, no, you thought you were in charge. No, it's Palpatine. It's always Palpatine. He's the Star Wars guy. He's the Star Wars villain. And then in my mind, it to kind of quote Carl, the worst piece of writing in the entire Star Wars franchise was when Palpatine literally like sucked the life out of Ray and Ben because of a bond that hasn't been seen in a hundred years. Really? That's how you're going to handle this, JJ. You're just going to have Palpatine suck the life out of him and all of a sudden, yes, I'm alive, snitches! Like, suffer! Like, oh, really? Boy. I was laughing. I had to contain my laughter because it was the dumbest thing ever. It was like, there's a bond between you two that hasn't been seen in a hundred years. Um, they like Ray just tried to kill him thirty minutes ago, and now but, they have uh, a that's bond. What one of a thousand plot holes? Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, one, one of a million. Thousand. I do agree on that, but it's just like, I, I can understand in a certain way JJ trying to go back to what Return of the Jedi had in terms of finality. All the problems with that movie aside, but. Uh, you know that had a finality to it one way or another, and much like how Force Awakens tr- ha- uh, called back to A New Hope, you know I, I I understand why he wanted to go back to that kind of nostalgia and finality, but to bring back Palpatine as great as he was, he honestly had some really great scenes. I'm not gonna lie, including the opening scene with Kylo, that was great stuff. Even quoting Episode Three with the whole line about you know powers being a natural, it just was like. Why is he the final boss? Why is he the guy that after all this, after all this stuff about, you know, making a new trilogy with new characters and new worlds and all this stuff, why did we have to go back to Palpatine? It it just it just really bothered me. All right, well, screaming I'm... teenage girls wouldn't let Ben be the villain. Oh boy. Um I'm actually going to jump in because I agree with Carl, which I know funny. We'll that we've later. had some very epic arguments, <laughs> but on the uh, spoiler cast last time about Rose and Ray. But actually, I agree with Carl that I don't like that she said Skywalker at the end, and I would have preferred she said Palpatine. And I, here's why. So, being a massive fucking nerd, I've read the books, the novels, the now canonical novels. Yeah, and... I was gonna say the ones that no longer exist. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Disney. Oh, it's fine. This one technically is currently considered canon. I mean, you know, if you're listening to this 20 years from now, uh, I guess you can look it up and, and see. But Claudia Gray's Bloodline, which is a fantastic book, it follows Leia post, uh, um, post-Return post of the Jedi, trying to sort of solve the universe and and doing that. And, you know, she's she's in the, the whatever Galactic Senate trying to fix all of her problems. And it comes out that she's not an Organa, that she is a Skywalker, and that her father was Vader. And she has to deal with the ramifications of basically being tied to one of the most villainous people. Even after her brother saved the universe, being the daughter of Darth Vader carries a lot of stigma. And she sort of has to figure out ways not only to work through it and hold her position still in the rebellion and and, and in government, but also to come to terms with it herself. And it would have been poetic to have Rey do the same with her Palpatine heritage. Um, and that's one thing when, when Bed says, you know, your father, my my mother was the daughter of Vader and your father was the son of Palpatine. And it's like, yes, that's that's an interesting parallel. Can we can we do something with that? And of course, you know, it also would have been cool if she had just said, just Rey. She's like, I don't belong to anyone. But whatever, her Jedi parents watching over her on Tatooine is fine. The thing that I found most surprising slash disappointing um, and this has sort of been built up over three movies, is how fucking useless the Knights of Ren are. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that we all agree. They were supposed to be these big, awesome people. Like, I was waiting. I finally saw them, you know, coming out. I was like, oh, we're going to see how, like, epic these are. We're going to see what their, like, their weapons do. And, no, no. I mean, Ben beats them up in, like, a sum of five minutes, and they're done. Um, they, they are officially part of Phasma Club. Yeah, they are the, they are they are basically more phasmas. 
Um, I found that supremely disappointing uh, and a little surprising, again, given how much they sort of built them up, uh, especially in side lore stuff. But, you know, like with all things, as a Star Wars fan, you get used to disappointment. Uh, Keith, hit me. Well, I'm going to do the cop out and say I agree to everything that Todd said. Um, Also, what you just mentioned about the Knights of Red. But my big issue was going back to the last uh, 15, 20 minutes of the movie when they were fighting Palpatine. Okay, so I'm going to blast Ben off the platform. Goodbye, Ben. I just shot this giant-ass lightning bolt that disabled all these ships in the sky. And I couldn't do the same thing to to anybody else? I mean, I, I'm shooting Ray like with this itty-bitty lightning bolt. Like, why don't I just fry her ass the way I fried those ships up there? No. No, we're not going to do that. She's going to pull out two lightsabers, and I'm going to deflect it back to you and kill you. Like, wait. Wait. I, I don't understand this. Please help me understand this. He's one of the most powerful people in the Star Wars universe, and I couldn't kill her. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Where's my epic light, lightsaber battle? Where's my epic fight? The Knights of Ren, as you all mentioned, got their asses handed to him. So that was a bunch of BS. We didn't get an epic fight in the last movie. We got a decent fight. It wasn't epic. It wasn't Jedi Returns. And we didn't get it in this movie either. Uh, I mean, I th- I think Kylo and Rey on the the Death on the Death Star uh platform or whatever that was kind of epic. It was eh. epic, but it wasn't it wasn't Vader versus Luke. Okay, fair enough. Yep. And that's I what I was looking for, and we didn't get that. We didn't get that whatsoever. And then we go back to this whole "You're the daughter or your granddaughter of Palpatine." Okay, um, that's. I mean, first of all, I didn't agree that Palpatine should have been in this movie at all. You fell down a shaft, dude. You should have been dead. Whatever. Okay. And at the very end, when she decides, you know, I'm going to be a Skywalker. I agree with what was said. You should have said, no, I'm a Palpatine. And it could have went, but aren't the Palpatines bad? I'm going to change that shit. Or, or not all of them. Yeah, I'm going to change that. We're, all, we're not all bad guys. No, I'm going to be a Skywalker. And we go back to the very thing that everybody's been arguing about for as long as I can remember Star Wars being a thing, is that Star Wars did not revolve around the Skywalkers. Yes, they were a big portion of Star Wars, but as you've seen in Clone Wars and as you're seeing in The Mandalorian and other things, Rebels. they weren't the they weren't the only focus point. We're going right back around saying, hey, Star Wars are number one th- uh, Skywalker are number one thing in Star Wars. Thank you. Why? We didn't need that. We really didn't need that. All right. Well... Those are some not very spicy hot takes since all of us kind of agree with each other. Uh, why don't we try and look a little bit on the positive side of things? Like for a hot second before we then destroy the rest of this movie. What <laughs> did... I know, I know. Don't laugh. <laughs> what did we like, guys? Let's Ooh, start I'll go with... first. Oh, okay. I'll go first. One of my biggest complaints about The Last Jedi, and I'll keep it light, was that Ray, Finn, and Poe were all separated. I mean, obviously, Poe and Finn were together at the beginning before the side mission, but um, I didn't like how, after basically, you know, finally getting together at the end of Force Awakens, because, you know, Poe was, uh, you know, captured and all that, uh, that they were all separated. I This new trilogy kind of needed these characters to really be distinct in their own ways, but also have that chemistry like Luke, Han, and Leia did. And so, for me, one of the biggest joys at the beginning of the movie was when Finn and Poe come back from their uh, information mission or whatever, and the first thing that Ray and Poe do upon seeing each other is, why is the Falcon on fire? Why is our droid on fire? It's like, he'll be fine. Oh yeah, like the ship is? No, no, he's not fine. Look at him. He's burnt. He's like partly burnt. It's just like, and then Finn's just looking at them like the moderator and it's, it's just, it's a very funny scene because I'm like, yeah, that is how they would interact with one another because Poe's an alpha, Ray's very much an alpha, and Poe is, you know, between his two best friends in life. And I liked their chemistry together. I mean, we, we it did eventually get splintered off when Ray had to go do her thing, but I liked seeing them together, this tr- this new trinity. And I, I wish that we did have more of it, especially at the end, especially with Finn apparently only wanting to tell Ray that he was force sensitive. Oh my gosh, what a secret to hold to the end of the movie! And okay. uh, even beyond that, th- JJ had to tell us that it was totally a lie. He totally wanted to tell her he loved her, but guess you can't have that in Star Wars. Anyway, 
Um, wrap it up, Todd. Wrapping it up. But I loved, I loved having the Trinity together in some fun scenes and having them show the friendships that they had built, and that was really special to me. Awesome, Carl. Uh, see, I so while Tom was talking, I went back and had a look over my my review, and usually I try to point out some good things, and I really realized that I didn't. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> like, like even 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 my like bits that I enjoyed it was basically followed up with a lot of the stuff I really wanted to see sort of expounded upon, expanded. Like for example, I liked Kylo's redemption arc in this. Him sort of turning away from the dark side and realizing, you know, that killing his father was a mistake and all that type of stuff. Brilliant storytelling. Loved it. Um, Ray's little encounter in the vault with, like, her Sith self with that flip friggin' lightsaber thing. Cool as hell. Why don't we expand upon that? Nope, that's only going to be a two-second scene. Okay, then. Um, But the thing that got me and probably my my biggest... I, I... Try, I don't want to call it enjoyment, but it was like the more, most emotional I got in this entire movie. Chewbacca's reaction to Leia's death. The fact that he lets out the big wail and then he drops down to his knees, starts pounding the ground, and I think Poe tries to, to console him. He pushes him away and just keeps wailing as the camera pans out. It's like you feel for Chewbacca in that in that particular scene because not only has he lost... He's lost Luke, he's lost Han, his best best friend, now he's lost Leia, like, all of the original people that he had around him during, like, the first war, or second war, whatever it was, they're all dead now, and he's the only survivor besides the droids. And, and you know, Lando's off doing his thing on the party planet. Like, to, to feel that emotion from a Wookiee, out of all the things, the one character that cannot speak. That was just that bit of storytelling where even I started to tear up. I'm like, I, I got exactly what that part of the emotion was supposed to be in that scene. But outside of like that particular scene, there was just things that I, I had a two-second enjoyment and then it got killed off because it was like, let's move on to the next thing. Like, uh, CP- 3PO, when they're doing the little June t- chase on on the party planet thing. Um, where it's like, oh, great driving, sir. And then all of a sudden, Poe fucks up. Well, that's bad driving, sir. And just keep, and then they just keep going. It's like, give us a couple of seconds to laugh at the joke. But yeah, that's just me. I, I just realized now that I'm like, I was really hunting to try and find good moments in this thing. Fair enough. Keith? Well, I'm going to go back to the party planet, or I think it's called P- Pasana. Um, I really enjoy the desert chasing, and I enjoy the weighty banner between the, the uh, between Poe and um, C three PO, and also with uh, Finn, especially when the rocket stormtroopers forgot what they call were in the sky, and they're like, they can fly now, they can fly now, they can fly now, and it's like, okay, you've never seen these guys before, okay, great, that's awesome. I think perhaps the biggest part of the movie that I enjoyed the most is when they finally so- showed Lando, and it's like, where the hell have you been all this time, man? He just comes out of nowhere. He still and he still got the same charisma that he had in the previous movies. He's you always know, like, "I'm smiling and I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm here to save the day." I missed that character, and I and I love the fact that out of all the old guard, he's the only one still around. Yeah, well, him and Chewie. Yeah, well, him and Chewie. And the droids. The, droids didn't really count. Me, they're droids. They're not. Droids always count. They're oh, not they're alive. The droid. They're not alive. Nobody cares if you upset a droid, guys. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, uh, to. <laughs> um, I have to before, say before we, before we move on, uh, oh, I just, that's I, 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 I got a quick question. We're not I moving got, on. I got, uh, I got a quick question though. Oh. Just just since we just brought, we'll bring up Lando a couple of times, was I the only one who caught what system he came from? Which one? Like right right at the end where he's talking to um Jaina, the Jaina, the the, the, new, the new character that got thrown away. In like three seconds. I don't think she got uh, thrown away. I think she's back. I I don't think she yeah, got thrown ho- away. Yeah, horse lady. Thank yeah, you. that one. I swear to God, he meant when they're talking about where they're from and everything. She goes, "I don't know." And Lando, I swear, either I misheard this or this is like the best little slip into the movie. 
that Lando is from the 45 system. Huh. Okay. Because, because, okay, Billy D. Williams. Oh, Colt 45? Used to do commercials for Colt 45. Yeah, Colt 45. And to have that be where Lando is from, I thought that was just a good little Easter egg little... to sort of slip in there. But then again, I can't remember if I misheard or whether that was actually intentional. You misheard. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to look it up on Wikipedia. It hold on, hold on. I'm going to get a confirmation. Okay. But he... I do want to say while she's looking that up, I thought it was a total cop out that the girl was apparently his daughter. Well, they're trying to put the connection. Down well, I thought he was daughter. just hitting on her. So, oh, I I thought he was honestly being a nice guy, but I'm just like, <laughs> this is a complaint that honestly was put in with uh, Game of Thrones in that uh, the only two black characters, Misande and Grey Worm. They became a couple because it's like, oh yeah, I have the two black people together, and I'm just like, well, that's kind of a racist way to think about it. And then I, and then I, like, I see something like this is like, well, oh yeah, of course, if you have like one black lady, and she, of course she's Lando's daughter, and I'm like, uh, wow, now I'm starting to think about Game of Thrones again. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay then, yeah, I, I see yeah. where you're going with this now. Oh. Well, okay. Uh, don't, don't, I'm right there with you on that one, Todd. That was Thank just you. bad. Yeah. That was just bad. <laughs> I just love that he was hitting on her, but anyway, because it's Lando. <laughs> Um, so unfortunately, Carl, you did miss here. Uh, Lando is from Socorro, and that is in the gold system. Oh. Ah, uh, I thought I thought I missed that. Yeah, that's yeah, eh, okay. all good. I stand corrected. Yeah, no worries. All right, now what I liked the most, um, I kind of agree with you guys. I think the banter between Poe and Finn is just, it's the best part of the movie for me. Um, am I a little disappointed that they, we didn't end up with Space Boyfriends? I was fine with that. I was fine not having. It. I don't. I never. I saw wanted it. space boyfriends. I I was fine with it as well. Yeah. I, I mean, if you're gonna Finn do it, Poe, do it. I don't force it. Finn Ray forever. Yes, which never happened. What? Not, okay. Not, well, not canon. Agree to disagree about OTPs, and that's fine. I'm just saying the banter was wonderful, and I could have watched the whole movie full of banter, and it would have been great. It would have been. It would have been awesome. It would have been a great movie. So I like their banter a lot, like a and, lot, a lot. And, and let me just, let me just, let me just uh, point out there. I don't, I wouldn't have a problem if they wanted to do a Poe and a Finn, but they were already pushing Finn towards Ray, and it's yeah. like, all right, we've got this thing going on here, and all of a sudden, you know what? Pfft, forget it. It's gone. Whatever. But Poe saved him. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're gonna not gonna argue about OTPs on a spoiler cast because I we're gonna get real heated real fast, and it's just gonna be a bloodbath. But that is true forever. Oh God. Yeah, oh, I can live with that. Anyway, we got the furries. Oh, great. Don't you Moving king on. shame. Don't you king shame. <laughs> anyway, um, and then on top of that, I just, I just got a very, very precise, controversial statement. Babu Frick is better than Baby Yoda. No, agree. No, no, it's great. No, no. Hey, Baby Yoda rules all. They Baby can be Yoda. the. That can be the next death battle. There you go. Listen, Sign it. <laughs> in terms Sign of it. the cute, in terms of the cute shit that they put in Star Wars to appeal to children. Um, Baby Yoda for me is number two, and Babu Frick is now number one. Baby Yoda was number one, but he's been dethroned. Um, we can all agree is... though that that both of them are better than the Porks, right? Yeah, just making but sure. But you haven't seen the Mandalorian yet either, so when you see that, you I may change enough. your mind. I I've seen the memes and the gifts. I know enough. I I know enough. Listen, Baby Yoda is great. I'm just saying that Babu Frick is better, and I love it, and I want one as as the Lucas Corporation has me has taught me. I want one in my house. Um. One day I will buy one of those little stupid figurines and thus complete the prophecy of George Lucas and all of the monetization of all his goods. All right, so that was heated, and I love it. I love that we all have these super interesting opinions and are ready to murder each other over them, or, or at least low-key lightsaber battle about them. Um, low-key it... choke you out. Oh my god, please don't. <laughs> um, yeah, please, thanks. I'm good with that. Um, if you had to give best performance in this movie, who would it go to? And we're going to start with Carl. Oh, God, best performance in this one. Um, as much as I'd love to give it to uh, 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 Jonas, who did Chewbacca just for that one scene, I'm sorry, I've, I, I've got to give it to Palpatine. Dude is as corny and over the top as he has as he was in the prequels, and I loved every minute of it. That's so right. basically, that, that, is... that Street Fighter logic—it was so bad, it was so great. Oh hell yeah! It, it, it was so bad, it was good. 
it's like that that hokey over the top that only he could deliver and it worked so well even though he's playing a character who got screwed over three times by his own freaking move <laughs> yeah uh, did anyone else notice that three times he's been screwed over with false lightning why does he keep doing it <laughs> i don't i don't think he i don't think he's got anything else in his repertoire i think he's just like it's force lightning or nothing for me yeah probably uh all right let's go to keith i actually want to give it to ben i want to give it to old driver at the very end he pulled it out for the redemption arc not the kissy kissy part but when he's in there with the knights of the run he's like you know what whatever guys let's go all right forever will now be known as the kissy kissy part I swear to God, they did that. I was like, no, don't I know, do I that. Like, oh, come on. I saw it coming from a mile away. I was like, yep. Mm -hmm. but, and then, then JJ went and said, he, JJ shot himself so much in the foot, but he said like, oh yeah, they're like brother, sister. And I'm like, oh, so this is like Game of Thrones then. Oh, okay, no, it's yeah. like Luke and Leia, y'all. It's Luke and Leia it's over Luke here. Luke and Leia, y'all. Luke and Leia. We should have got it behind the camera scene with that, though. So you just kiss each other. You're brother and sister. The only thing that, the only thing that could have been worse is if Finn had somehow made it onto that scene and he saw that he's like, "Crap!" This boyfriend's um Todd. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it to Driver, but for the uh totally awesome and totally unexpected Han Solo scene, when Han showed up, I could also get also give it oh, to yeah. Han. But when Hans showed up and Harrison Ford was there, and nobody had this, nobody was saying that Harrison Ford was going to be in the film, and they basically do a, a reverse of the Force Awakened scene with the lightsaber. It's like I need help. Ben is or Ben is dead. No, Kylo's dead. And then seeing him throw the lightsaber into the ocean and then turn around to see his father gone was just like he he knew he had done the right thing. And then even having the blaster. Uh, when he was trying to go and save Ray, which is a really cool thing, but uh, I heard it. I heard some people say that Drivers was more of a less is more performance. That's not a bad thing. Uh, even though, again, I wanted him to be the big bad. What he did was very, very strong, and I thought honestly this was a very great performance from Drivers, sealing Kylo slash Ben as one of the best characters in the new trilogy. I have to agree. I definitely think the driver performance, especially when like the body language and his face sort of shifts when he goes back to the light, um, you can like really see it. You can feel there's a difference in the character and the way that he's holding himself, which I think is really masterful performing. Uh, and I'm I'm pretty tempted to give it to Driver too. Basically, uh, I still want a special mention um, Poe. Just oh yeah, just because I just think that he finally got more to do. And also question. For the 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 wonderful panel of nerds that we've got here, is is it supposed to be a joke that he's a spice runner? Is that like a Dune reference? I think it's just because it was like uh, it, it's not what you expected. I mean, he's the best pilot in the galaxy. I mean, that's his title. Right. And then he was like, "Oh, I was a spice runner. You were a spice runner? Yeah." I I I, I like you were saying. I I I I thought about another movie. Uh, which one was it? Um, uh, uh, Captain America. Uh. The Winter Soldier was it? When when uh, Cap and um, the Widow were still taking the guy's car, and she's like, "Where did Captain America learn to hotwire a car?" Oh yeah, and that was a reference to the other movies. Yep, he's like, hey, that, was, "That was that was classy. I like yeah. that." It's like, yeah, just because I'm a good guy now doesn't mean I don't know a couple of things I shouldn't know or I haven't right. done. Carl, any feelings about Spice? <laughs> I th I think it was just sort of a way to sort of knock down his ego because he always sort of upplayed himself, sort of like Han Solo did in the original. And I think just making him a spice runner was just a way to sort of knock that ego down a little bit. And it's like, oh, okay, so all this talk that you've had is 90% bullshit. Cool, yeah. fair enough. Let's move on. You, 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 could, you could say that they were just adding a little uh, spice of life. Oh, dear uh, God. First of all, the spice is life. Thank you. Todd Dorf. Frank, dude. This is known. <laughs> This is known. And Todd saying goodnight, everybody. No. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Da, oh, man. Da, da, da. All right, Remember, all right, that's all life. Right. Spice is life. Um, no, no more Frank Doom means. Um, all right. So let's think about sort of the trilogy, this specific set of the trilogy overall. If in the mass trilogy, now that the story is over, you could go back and change one thing. One thing. Only one thing. What would it be and why? We're going to start with Keith. Oh, wow. Hmm. I don't think you want to start with me. <laughs> Too bad. So sad. Uh, if I could change anything, Ray would not be a Palpatine. How about that? I know. 
I mean, I, I hate to steal a page from Carl's book, but and I, I don't ever think I've already used his word in a sense before, but she is basically the Mary Sue. And it's like, I can do everything. Oh, no, no, we don't need this. I I was fine with Ray just being, I don't know who my parents are. Or I'm just trying to find my own place in the world. Great. That's fantastic. You're not yeah. the only person in this world who has lost parents and are finding their own way. But from the start, forcing her into situations where, hey, you know, I'm trying to pull this shit back. All of a sudden, I'm throwing lightning on my hands. Like, wait, what? what? Where did that come from? Oh, I was just trying to see what you were made of and if you could actually do that. How the hell do you know? Oh, you know what? I think it's because Palpatine told him. Yeah, but it's like, it's like, you know, it's all this crap about Palpatine. And you know what? I take it back. I could have done without Palpatine. How about that? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I definitely think her being a nobody. It's sort of like, uh, have you guys ever seen that Pixar movie, um, Ratatouille? Or- I love it. I yeah. love that movie. Yeah. The idea that's like anybody, it's not that like any anybody can cook, but a good cook can come from anywhere. I think it's like, it, it would have been cool to have that same idea with the Jedi. It's like, you don't have to be related to the fucking Skywalkers or a big important person previously in the franchise to be a great Jedi. That a great Jedi can come from anywhere and be anybody. Um, and I think also that's what pissed people off the most about the prequels was the whole midichlorian bullshit where oh, it wasn't yeah. like how good or connected you were to the force is like, nope, it's, it's fucking tiny space bugs in your blood and we count them. And that's how we know, um, you know, this idea that like a great Jedi or a Sith can be anybody like you have the power to make the choice to be good or bad or in the dark or with the light. Um, and so I, I super agree that the whole Palpatine thing was just, it was, it was too much. I think, I think they took something away from race character by basically saying, nah, of course, she's part of the same three fucking super families out here trying to destroy the goddamn universe. Like, fine, but she it would have been cool for Ray just to be a person, a, a rando in the universe. Exactly. Not a Lando, a rando. Um, or she could have been a Lando. I'm just. <laughs> uh, you know, listen, that would have been that would have been hilarious. Like, so I'm a Calrissian, huh? Yep. We got anything special? Nope. All right, that's oh. cool. I would have I would have paid money to hear Billy D. Williams go, "Hey kid, I'm your father." <laughs> that Do you want to have some Colt forty five with me? Best li- <laughs> liquor in the galaxy. Oh man! All right, <laughs> Carl, what would you change? I changed the the sort of theming of the film. Like this whole thing was more about finding out who you are, and you know who you are doesn't matter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would have switched that over with this being Ben's redemption arc. Like, you do a little TV series where you see what happened, what led him to become the leader of Knights of Ren, etc. But this movie series was about him learning from that, starting out evil, turning good, having a proper redemption arc, rather than the last third of a film. Because I, I found the redemption arc to be the best, better part of the film. Yet, I would have loved to have seen that over the trilogy rather than just, like, a third of a movie. I definitely agree with that. Todd? Uh, I'm going I'm to keep it basic. Simple. I'm going to keep it simple, just for, for timing's sake. Uh, if I was to change one thing about this trilogy, I would have J.J. Abrams do all three films. <laughs> I, uh, that's not Cohesive cool. storytelling? Holy crap. Oh, uh, I don't it. think Kathleen Kennedy would stand for that. Sorry, guys. Well, hey, hold on. Actually, J.J. Abrams talked about uh, recently uh, uh, why he didn't do the second movie, and it was because he didn't want to be apart from his family uh, like he would have been if he had done three back-to-back, uh, which is kind of what happened with the Star Trek. And But the problem is that when he did The Force Awakens, he wrote with his he went with his writers, and he wrote this massive whiteboard of all the things that they were going to hope that they had done. And at the time, he thought maybe he would do all three movies. And then he stepped back. Brian Johnson came in and just burned the whiteboard to the ground. <laughs> and then by J.J.'s own admission, this was in the same interview that I just quoted, uh, he said that when he came back to do the, four, or the Rise of Skywalker, he basically went back to the whiteboard. It was like it was like the, it had never been burned down in the first place. He just changed some things to slightly match Last Jedi and then for, ignored the rest of it. <coughs> R- Rose Tico. And he just kept going with his thing and then he tied it up his own way. The biggest question 
that we as fans are going to ask ourselves is not whether The Last Jedi is good or bad or indifferent, is what would have happened if J.J. had done all three movies like he originally planned to. Would it have been this controversial? Would it have been this divisive if he had done the second one and not Rian Johnson? So, right. I, would, I would have preferred to at least see him try. I have a feeling it wouldn't have been, a, I, even though I can't say it would have been a great trilogy, even if he had done the second one, I can say it would not have been this divisive. Then again, he did do Star Trek Into Darkness, so maybe that's not a safe bet. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if we're gonna talk, if we're gonna talk about Into Darkness, we're gonna be here for three hours because this I've got this is a true. lot to say. So uh, we're gonna put put that in a box for another day. Yeah. Um. So finally, the last question before closing remarks, guys, because you know I want to keep this, I want to keep this contained, um, because we all have lots of feelings, and again, you should all read Carl's review at theotherhaven.net if you haven't already. Um. But I would like to sort of talk a little bit about a lot of us especially big time star wars people came into this movie with a lot of expectations um and those expectations at least for me included i was expected to be disappointed in some things so did any of you guys go in with those kinds of expectations and if so were you in fact disappointed with that or not uh who are we gonna start with let's start with todd ever since and i am asking you guys not to the to mark when I speak this movie's name. Uh, ever since Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice, a movie which I hail as one of the best superhero films of all time, that is not a joke or sarcasm. I have learned to not trust critics. It doesn't matter if they're my friends. It doesn't matter if they're revered. It doesn't matter if they're with Entertainment Weekly. I can look at their scores. I can lightly read what they say, but I go into every single film just hoping to enjoy a movie. I when the Rise of Skywalker came out, I looked at a couple of the websites just to see what they said score wise, but I read nothing of the review. I didn't want any influence whatsoever. And I made sure that I didn't have any spoilers in my feed just in case someone wanted to troll me. I went into this film just wanting to have a good experience, which I can honestly say I didn't really have with Last Jedi looking back. And because of that expectation, I enjoyed a great majority of the film. I didn't love the film, like I said. I liked it, and that's fine. And so my only expectation was, I hope they at least satisfy me in regards to the ending. And I was satisfied enough. There are plot holes out the wazoo. I didn't like Palpatine being the final boss. I didn't like some of the stuff that happened with Ray and Ben and Pin and even uh, Finn and even Poe. But um, I was still okay with it. I was still happy that I saw the movie and I saw it with my dad, which who I've seen every Star Wars movie with. So I was not disappointed. I was sad that some things didn't happen like I felt they should have and that they did have to do some serious retconning to kind of like try and satisfy everybody. But there were some moments that I just smiled so big, like the be with me scene, the second one, not the first one, the second one, where I'm hearing all the voices, including some I had to look up because I didn't understand them. When I heard Liam Neeson, when I heard Ashley Eckstein as Ahsoka Tano, when I heard uh, Freddie, Freddie Prince Jr. was there, actually, as as uh, uh, Jaden, or Kanan, uh, or Doom, uh, technically, uh, to hearing all the voices of the Jedi from the past saying, hey, we're with you. Even Hayden Christensen was there, and it was awesome. You know, There were those moments that really had me smiling, and so that's why my expectations were fine and they were met to an extent and to which I liked the film. So, yeah. Cool. Carl. I was the opposite. I'm a guy who has followed the controversy since day one. Um, I found the Reddit leaks for the first version of this film that came out uh, before they did all the reshoots due to the test screenings. I read everything. I saw a lot of what was going to happen, and I just face palmed going into this. The fact that a lot of what I had read was confirmed, I wasn't happy with, but I still took enough of it away to sort of go, okay, I can sit here. I can at least rewatch this later when it comes out on uh, on Blu-ray and everything, and I might actually find more to enjoy it later down the track. Um. Yeah, like there, there's just so much to it, like plot holes and stuff like that. You know, the fact that you know Palpatine, 
Palpatine still died and hit the assault and transfer fucking anywhere like he said he would. <laughs> anyway, hey, dude, you screwed up your own fucking prophecy. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, like, I was definitely walking out of it going, okay, we're going to see Ray the Mary Sue get away with just about everything under the sun, and she did. And then gigantic middle finger at the end of it with the Skywalker reference. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. This is Disney's trilogy. They can have it. For me, I'm still happy. I've got the other six films I can sit there and I, I enjoy. I'm actually like Todd. I actually do enjoy the prequels. You know, the you know, stupid stuff aside, like Jar Jar Binks and everything else, I actually enjoyed them. Cohesive storytelling, and they were leading up to the original trilogy, and they did a good job of it. This, just, no. You know, I, I'm <laughs> quite happy to let this, these sit on my shelf and probably collect dust for the next 30 odd years or something. Fair enough. I have to say, like Todd, um, I see my I see Star Wars movies almost exclusively with my dad. Fun fact, um, when I was, uh, I must have been like eight, maybe nine, I think it was eight, um, my dad came and picked me up from school, telling the school that I had a doctor's appointment, and it was in fact a lie. He then took me to the movie theater to go see Phantom Menace on opening day, um, which is some A-plus parenting in my goddamn opinion. Uh, I too like the prequels a lot. Um, you know, I loved Amadala. I was like a nine-year-old, what do you want from me? Um, I will say... Like Carl, I followed a lot of the controversy beforehand because as TV and film editor, that is your job. Um, and there was a lot of talk about justice for Rose Tico and da da da. I was like, oh crap, what did they what did they fucking do in this movie? And I went to see the movie and I don't I don't care. Like I just don't care about Rose Tico. Like, it's fine. Like it wasn't a bad thing and it wasn't a good thing. Like, listen, I get it. Kelly Marie Tran got a lot of shit that she should not have gotten on social media um, because more goes into a character than just the acting. Um, but, you know, when they were like, oh, she deserved better, I'm like, meh. She was meh. a B tier. She was a B tier character in a or subplot. C yeah, or even C tier, honestly. And, like, it yeah. was fine. She was part of the rebellion. She was on the ground floor. She was active. She had lines. Like, listen, do you would I be totes into a Rose Tico mini series or side series? Sure. Why the hell not? That sounds dope, but like for what for what the movie was, I didn't need Rose to be in it more. And I liked Rose Tico in, in Last Jedi. I thought she was a cool character. I don't think they used her particularly well, but I think Kelly Marie Tran made an interesting performance and I would have liked to seen more of her but did i need to see her in this particular movie no i really didn't so i came in with that expectation and that expectation was not met like i i wasn't expecting i was expecting to be like annoyed or angry and i was just like no nope, this, this is fine i don't understand why we are upset i am not upset it is fine i, I um, think the people were upset because especially at the ending you know they, they had the whole like love triangle thing going on well i guess quadrangle if you throw on Qu uh, kylo with, you know, Ray, Finn, now Rose, and, you know, she risked her life to save Finn from sacrificing herself needlessly, and then all of a sudden she's like, hey, Rose, we're about to do, I saw this perfect meme was, hey, Rose, we're going to go on this adventure, you want to come with us? Oh, no, guys, I'm going to stay behind for a complete contrived reason. Yeah. Like, it, it felt hollow. It did, but at the same time, I'm just like, meh. She got other shit to do. It's not really, I don't know, and I hate this idea that, like, oh, she kissed him, so, like, they must be in love. I'm like, it's a kiss, bitch. Relax. It's fine. People kiss other people all the time, and it doesn't mean shit. So yeah, I don't look know. At, look at I... Leia. <laughs> <laughs> Back to incest. We love it. It's Star Wars. Um. So yeah, I don't. I that's that's one expectation I came in with, and I was not disappointed the way I thought it was going to be disappointed. Keith. Honestly, I didn't go into this movie with any expectations whatsoever. Um. I wanted. Like I guess I avoided as much as I could. I wanted to go in just to see it for myself without any kind of influence from anybody saying it was a good movie, it was a bad movie. And as I mentioned previously, I came away entertained. I had issues with some things, but some things I had a lot of I had a lot of fun with. So uh, if you're asking to live up to my expectations, mm, from the last couple of movies, sure. You gotta remember, I grew up with the original Star Wars trilogy, and then watching the mo other movies come out, it's like you know maybe it's nostalgia. But none of these movies still live up to my original three. Right. So. Okay. Totally fair. 
All right. So, guys, we are now at closing remarks. If you've got any final thoughts that you'd like to bring up, now is the time. We're going to go in original order. So we're going to start with Heath. What are you asking me? What do you want from me? What do you want? Fin final thoughts, remarks, anything you want to make sure the audience knows so they don't think that you're a dirty traitor or whatever. I'm Team Finn. We should have found out from the horse's mouth directly that he was force sensitive. Yes, the clues were there. The hints were there. Yes. They need to come and say, hey, you know what? Hey, and the thing that I've been trying to tell you the entire movie, I'm force sensitive. I knew when you died. And that was we didn't get that. stupid. We still didn't get it. We, we still have got it, though. We should have got it. Okay. We I didn't got get Ray it. and Finn. Huh. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Keith? You good? I'm good. You good. I'm All fine. right. Hit me with it, Todd. Final thoughts. All right. To know my final thoughts, I have prepared a one-hour orientation starting okay, with the prequels. Okay, that's Todd's I'm time. kidding. Thank I'm you. kidding. I'm kidding. Look, I, I, I'm going to tell you what I tell a, a lot of people when it comes to movies. You're going to hear a lot of hateful things. You're going to hear a lot of loving things. I have dear friends who have loved this movie, liked this movie, hated this movie. All their opinions are right. The, the problem is not, you know, which opinion is right. The problem is what are you expecting to get from this film? Go into this film with no expectations. Let the film dictate how you feel about it. If you like it, great. If you think it's the best Star Wars movie ever, awesome. Good for you. If you don't like it, say so, but don't bash people over the heads with it. Your opinion is yours, and it shouldn't change if you feel strongly about it. The difference where the toxicity comes in is when you try and force people to see your your opinion. That's not how it works. Go and see the film, make your own opinion, feel like you feel how you want, and let that be the end of it. That's okay. that's how movies are supposed to work. Carl. Uh, so sort of echoing a little bit of what Todd said there, you know, there is no such thing as a wrong opinion when it comes to these movies. You can have differentiating opinions whether you liked it or hated it or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's still entertainment. As long as you're entertained, that's the main thing. Don't believe the media bullshit that's coming out right now where they're saying that toxic fans have ruined it because we didn't get the sequel to The Last Jedi. Don't believe any of that bullshit. Because all it is is trying to create controversy so that places will get clicks and, and videos will get watched on, on YouTube. At the end of the day, if you enjoyed it, good for you. If you didn't didn't like it, good for you. Don't decide to hammer it either way. Don't fucking defend this like this is, you know, hey, we're going to go to war, America versus Australia over freaking Star Wars. You that know, an it's, option? It's, it's, I'm it's, kidding. No, we go to war over, over different things, dude. Oh, there uh, you go. Yeah, death battle every month, remember? Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things of, you know, don't get heated over this. That being said, Fuck Disney, fuck Kathleen Kennedy, fuck this trilogy. <laughs> yeah, I knew this was coming. And fuck <laughs> Ray the Mary Sue. Oh told you. I told yeah. you. Uh, also, also. You, you know what it is? It's you, final you forgot, thoughts. You, you, forgot, you forgot the one key thing, Mace. You forgot, screw everyone who doesn't believe Baby Yoda is number one. Oh, wait, that's Sarah. Oh, oh I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. That goes double on that one. If you are not praising Baby Yoda, sorry, get the frog out. <laughs> but she's making Baby Yodas. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, spoilers. I'm crocheting baby Yodas. If you'd like she a baby is. Yoda, you can have one. Yeah. I mean, so, oh, oh, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, please. I'll order. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. Carl, these are gifts. There is no money involved. I make baby Yodas yeah. out of love. No, I, I, I will. I, I thought will they were made out of yarn. Postage, it takes a lot of money to send those yeah, I, I can testify to that. Anyway. It takes a fair while enough, to Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. All right, all right. Well, yeah, unfortunately, if you're not on this podcast, you don't get a baby Yoda. Just saying. Um, Can't get a baby Yoda wipe. Sorry. <laughs> I like Baby Yoda, guys. I just like Babu Freak more. Why can't I have opinions? <laughs> because your opinion is wrong. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carl, you all wrapped up? I I'm good. I got my fuck the Ray Mary Sue out now twice, so I'm happy. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Good, sir. All right. So for me, I definitely think my final thought, I mean, I totally agree with you guys. If you like the movie, you like the movie. If you don't, you don't. I just think that it was going always to be hard to land this nanology, to land this the Skywalker saga. It was always going to be hard. I don't think it was going to be a way to make everyone happy. It just wasn't going to happen. Um, and you know, I, I, I there are parts of this movie I really liked. There's parts of this movie I could do without. There are parts of this movie that disappointed me, that thrilled me. All in all, will I go back and watch them again in 20, 30 years? Eh, maybe with my own kids, you know, if I have kids. 
<laughs> it's something to think about, but I think for me, more than anything, the, the biggest thing, the best thing that's going to come out of this movie, and here's just hopefully knocking on fucking wood and that Kathleen Kennedy can hear me, because girl, girl, please, girl. It's, it's time, it's time to move on. The Mandalorian is a great start. Rogue One was a great start. But I want to see more of this universe. I want to see, I want to see Star Wars become what Star Trek sort of is starting to unfold into. I want to see new stories. I want to see new aliens. I want to see the Force in in different being used in different ways. I want to see the history of the Jedi early on. I want to see a world. 100 200 years after ray has died i want to see planets that were totally untouched by the empire or ones that were at the center of this whole thing and how it affected them i want to see more of star wars but i don't want to see more skywalker star wars i want to see where they can take this universe i want them to get people who have different ideas who you know have cool ways that they can use what's already been built to build more interesting projects than just pew pew lightsaber battle you know because we've done that and it's great what we've got is fine but i want to see different so hopefully that's what's going to happen moving forward but you know if not well yeah that's fine too but that's that's sort of where my last thoughts are so gentlemen thank you so much uh for coming and talking and sharing your opinions it's been a pleasure as always thank you for having us glad to do it sarah no problems. At least this didn't take two hours like our first one did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we have thoughts, Carl. <laughs> we have thoughts. Respectful thoughts, damn it. We did a good job. We brought balance to the force. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, that's all you can ask for. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening to us. Again, you can find us all at theouterhaven.net. You can read Carl's review. I'm sure we'll have thought pieces and and essays eventually about this as, as we've processed through this and of course we've also got other great content we've got film and tv news video game news anime manga anything you could possibly want it's all right there for you and we will catch you all next time